and fellow alum, Peg Shields Lindmark. Fun to be first. <laughs> Thank you. Constance Futel was an innovator and leader even before graduating from Archbishop Marie Memorial High School in 1964. She often presented issues of the day in creative, humorous, and thought-provoking ways. At the table this evening, under the awning there, uh, are several other members of our class and one of our teachers. And we would be happy to share a few stories about those days if you're interested. <laughs> Since graduating, her passions and convictions have enriched the lives of many all over the world. She has traveled and developed lasting friendships in many places, from Southeast Asia to Israel to che Czechoslovakia to Denmark. And for almost 30 years now in her home city of Phoenicia, California. Constance's accomplishments are impressive. I'm not sure if she will share any of them in her remarks, so I've chosen to highlight three of them. For 30 years, she worked and innovated in corporate telecommunications. For eight years, she served in the U.S. Air Force and was awarded the Bronze Star and the Meritorious Service Medal. She earned a doctorate in education and taught in several graduate programs in fields of education, digital security, and network systems. Connie and I have been friends since first grade, and recently she has been my videography mentor. I admire the way she addresses serious issues with honesty, compassion, and buoyant energy. Please join me in welcoming Con Constance Ruta. I was in the Air Force so I can step up there and fly up. <laughs> Distinguished alumni and guests, uh, President Melissa Dan. Uh, Thank you very much for the honor of this award. In the fall of 1979, after an arduous and challenging five-week trip inspired by Alex Haley's book, Roots, I had included my first visit to communist Czechoslovakia, Poland, and Hungary in search of my grandparents' Czech birthplaces. Surviving on an intensive Czech Berlitz immersion course and the sights and sound of my grandmother's home on Clifton Street in St. Paul, I was exhausted from the ordeals of being followed, interrogated in Polish and in Hungarian and in speaking Czech. So I found myself on the last day of my Czechos in Czechoslovakia, seated at the counter in the Hotel Intercontinental Cafe in Prague, ordering breakfast when a man sitting next to me spoke in Czech, saying to the effect, you speak very good, but very slow in Czech. <laughs> Naturally, I took it as a compliment and replied, děkuji vám, thank you. No, he said, it wasn't you I was complimenting. You must have had a very good teacher. And so it is with my life because of very good teachers, friends and family, the world has been open to me in profound, mysterious, and joyful ways. For example, because of my grandmother, Anna Maulik, I developed a passion for seeing and engaging in the world. Her stories of her youth and dozens of postcards from Europe she would share with me inspired by adventure to see the world. Because of brilliant teachers like Sister, Sister Sheila, a transfiguration, the structure and fabric of language was revealed. Remember diagramming sentences and the red pony? And because of Judith Johannesson's passion for all things French and Sister Helene's skilled introduction to Latin, I was able to navigate from France to Thailand 
and China to Israel to Africa and South America. My parents taught me by their lived examples. My father with his participation and leadership in the labor movement, my mother by her interest in the news and the newsmakers, and my sister Roberta taught me nearly everything else worthwhile, from her love and support of the arts to her passion for golf. Roberta died a few years ago, but I know she is smiling at my 14 handicap. <laughs> but what brings me here this evening is the deep and abiding friendships I have been blessed to have, with friends like Kathleen Juniman and Peg Linloff, who have seen me through happy days, of course, but also through times of great personal loss of my parents and then my sister. You, you may not know how deep and powerful it is to come back to your home and have the love and support of these friends. As well as Mary Harrell, profoundly talented poet and dear, dear friend from Archbishop Murray days and the University of Minnesota. And of Cindy Bonger Gachowski from grade school and high school with the best sense of humor and the whistle you can imagine. And long dear friends, Barbara Reardon, who has come tonight from Reno, Nevada, and the Honorable Delaney Easton from California, to be with me here this evening. Barbara, whom I met when I was stationed at Hamilton Air Force Base, because she was starting a folk mass with, in the beautiful St. Rachel's Church in San Rafael, California. Barbara, whose brilliance as a pianist and coloratura soprano has been inspiring and her friendship enduring. Delaine, who worked with me at the telephone company and went on to four terms in the California State Assembly and two terms as a state superintendent of public instruction, and who ran courageously recently as the governor of California. What I'm counting to get me through the pearly gates was the creation of the self-directed education program at Pacific Bell. Because an employee who dealt with severe emotional problems had the fortitude to come to my office and suggest that my love for education could be used by the telephone pioneers. Her suggestion so moved me that I began a program on my lunch hour that over time became part of the corporate institution. And we put 12,000 employees through college and university programs right on company premises throughout the state of California. It also encouraged me to take a doctorate in education, which paved the way for a second 20-year career this time in higher education. Finally, a friend I helped to mentor, Dr. Denise Lucy, took up my suggestion to film her leadership lectures at Dominican University of California. The first lecture I filmed was none other than Jane Fonda, who was gracious enough to show me how to properly mic the talent. Since then, I've had the privilege of filming over 80 brilliant authors and American leaders. But if there's any good Czech spoken by me, and if my life has brought honor to the school, it is because of very good teachers and very good friends in my life. and thank you for um, representing Archbishop Murray and being here with us tonight with your friends. Uh, lots of things to hear there, um, fairly humbling for some of us. Uh, one is, um, my handicap's like 16, so that was, yes, congratulations. And also, as I listen, I, I think of how many of us are in the same boat as Hans and Seth. Here we sit, graduates, and many at this table and the tables as I look around with some of our best friends, friends that we met in our grade schools, whether it's presentation or uh, whether it's Ambrose or any of the parishes around. Friends since first grade, which is pretty much the story of Hill Murray. So thank you for sharing that with us and being with us tonight. Congratulations. Our next, our next award winner is Tom Yakau. He's a 1964 grad, the Hill High, High School Heritage Award. 
The Hill High School Heritage Award was established to honor the rich traditions of Hill High School, the culture and core values of the institution. Award recipients represent accomplishments and contributions that reflect the spirit and tradition of the school, then and now. To introduce Tom is his friend and fellow graduate, John Heller. I'd like to uh, thank uh, Dr. Yekout and his family for inviting my wife, Joanne, and I to be here today. Um, I feel privileged and a little overwhelmed. The only reason I'm up here is Tom and I grew up in the Como neighborhood. And we went to Maternity and Mary for eight years. We went to Hill for four years. And so I don't confuse anybody. While well, he was taking advanced physics and calculus, I was not. <laughs> so I don't want to confuse anybody. On that. A couple of years ago, I was at a meeting at Hill, and I mentioned uh, Tom's name to the committee. And I think it was Mary Morelli got her computer out and typed in the U.S. Air Force Academy, Professor Tom Yekow. She sat back and she said, oh my goodness, why hasn't this guy been in the Hall of Fame? So, here is a Reader's Digest version of this wonderful man. After graduating from Hill High School, uh, he went on to the University of Minnesota, where he got a degree in aeronautical engineering. He then entered the Air Force, where he served for 25 years as an officer with a focus on flight testing fighter aircraft. And I would imagine that could be a little iffy at times. Um, he then took a teaching position at the Air Force Academy. He then worked on his doctorate degree at the same time. So he has a doctorate of engineering in aerospace uh, from the University of Kansas. In 1993, Tom retired from active duty in the Air Force and rejoined the Aeronautical Engineering Department at the Academy as a, civil, as a civilian professor. Tom has led over 50 research efforts for the Air Force. Tom has worked with NASA. For us laymen, those are the people that put the rockets in outer space. And he's even worked with the US ski team. In addition to authoring two internationally adopted textbooks on aircraft performance and flight dynamics, he is a recipient of numerous awards, including, it's the AIAA, the American Institute of Aeronautics and Astronautics. Tom, you're going to have to tell us what astronautics are. Um, two NASA Outstanding Achievement Awards, three Air Force Academy Awards for Re Research Excellence. Tom has been recognized as the Outstanding Air Force Academy faculty educator by the entire class of the academy. And the Carnegie Foundation Colorado Professor of the Year. That encompasses all of the colleges, public and private, in the whole state of California. This man was voted the outstanding professor. In addition, Tom holds the patent for Racolet, wing tip modification concept, has offered, authored over 200 technical publications and instructed over 3,000 Air Force Academy cadets. Tom and I had lunch this summer and we gabbed a little bit and he said, oh, by the way, you got to tell him. I was a member of the track team at Hill, quarter miler. 
and the mile relay team, we were second in the state. Oh, by the way, he said, I was a member of the football team my senior year. I played halfback on the hamburger squad, was a star bench warmer, <laughs> had my nose broken by Joe Bosovich, and it hasn't been straight in 57 years. <laughs> So, what a wonderful background and resume. On a whim about six weeks ago, I reached out to the head of the aeronautical department at the Air Force Academy, and I said, Professor Yuckow is going to be inducted into our high school hall of fame. Would you like to give us some comments? And I thought, first of all, the man is extremely busy. It's the start of the school year. He probably won't get back to me. Or if he does, he'll say, Professor Yuckout is a wonderful teacher and a nice man. Instead, he wrote me a letter. As amazing as Tom's resume is, to me, this letter is even more important. Colonel Weikert writes, if I were to write a book I would not be able to say enough good things about Professor Yekko. Tom is absolutely amazing. He is the cornerstone of the Department of Aeronautics and is truly a national treasure. If you go anywhere in the fields of aeronautics and flight mechanics and mention Tom Yekko, everyone will know who you're talking about. He says if there was a Nobel Prize for aeronautics, Tom would be recognized as a prize winner. The closest thing we have in aeronautics is to be a fellow of the American Institute for Aeronautics and Astronautics. Of course, Tom is a fellow. Then he writes, I am attaching a photo of a recent visit to the Air Force Academy by a NASA administrator, Senator Bill Nelson. You can see the joy and enthusiasm Tom brings to explaining things. In the photo, he is explaining the dynamic stability of the Orion crew vehicle to the administrator for NASA. So this guy is instructing the NASA. Students absolutely love Tom's classes. I routine, routinely hear from Air Force captains, retired colonels, and generals who were in Tom's class more than 30 years ago and still talk about how much they learned from him. It is an axiom of education that students don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. I think that is what makes Tom so effective. He's kind and genuine and cares about his students and colleagues. The fact that he is also brilliant makes him the college professor that we all want to be. It's signed by Douglas P. Wickert, Colonel, U.S. at the Air Force Academy. So I'm privileged and overwhelmed to be classified as a friend of Tom. So, Dr. Yekhoff. to provide me the opportunity to attend Hill. 
Well, they are no longer with us. I am sure they are looking down right now and smiling. No one looks good on their own. And my wife, Kathy, has been instrumental in all this. Thanks to Kathy, we celebrated our 52nd anniversary a few months ago and had two kids and five grandchildren that we are blessed with. Thanks, Kath, for everything you do and continue to do to keep me on the course. My brother Bill, sister-in-law Cheryl, sister Joanne, and niece Andrea have been inspirations to me in life's journey. And I can't thank you enough. It's just super that you're here. Also, thanks to my grade school and high school classmate and friend, John Hill, for nominating me, and to Judy Schwartz for putting this event together. Also, my classmates Jim Wold, Paul Serdia, for joining us tonight. Wow, the Hill High School Heritage Award. What a great honor. You know, where'd that come from? Okay. I looked up the word heritage just to make sure it was on the same page. <laughs> it's defined as something passed down from previous generations. Well, as a member of the third graduating class from Hill, we were really lacking much of a heritage. Okay. But now, more than half a century later, I'm wondering, really, is there anything of value that I can pass along to the current student body? But I would like to try. Most of life is about learning along the way, dealing with adversity, solving problems, and developing your character. I think the foundation you start with is really important. Your parents are certainly the footings of that foundation and grade school and high school add bricks to form the walls. Hill certainly provided a big, great contribution to that foundation. As I reflect on those important years, it was a time of discovery of your abilities, a time to set some long-term goals, a time to realize that you might have a chance to achieve something significant in the challenging world we were about to enter. All this was nurtured by the exceptional Hill faculty. And where's Mike Ackerson? I had a chance to talk to Mike many years ago. Mike, thank you. Thank you very much. Each with their individual personality and who were, who were always there to help and encourage you. Although we probably didn't realize it, each faculty member was an important role model. We were quick to identify who was tough, who was demanding, who was nice, and so many other characteristics. Unknowingly, really, we adapted the traits that we liked from each to form our character. We didn't have iPhones or iPods or iPads. In fact, we didn't even have a computer screen on our dashboard. We had an AM radio. Five channels. <laughs> but I know the same process of the Hill Murray faculty serving as role models and contributing to character development for the students still goes on today. I say this without hesitation, based on my years at the academy. So, what can I pass along of value to Hill Murray students? Maybe this. It's all about developing relationships, problem-solving skills, a strong work ethic, and people skills. The foundation that will form your character and give you the confidence to set high goals in this world. Hill Murray is providing you an exceptional opportunity to do this, so take advantage of it. Develop a sense of accountability for the talents you have been blessed with a sense of giving back. Don't depend on others to do it for you. 
motivate others to do it with you. To the Hill Mary faculty, I would simply say you are the heart of this great institution. Thanks for all the sacrifices you make, and please keep doing what you do, because it has great impact on the students. Impact that will probably not be realized or even appreciated by them until several years down the road. Finally, for those of us who have our age approaching our IQs, <laughs> We find the time of re we find we're in a time of reflection. Okay, when we ask the question. I was given all these years. Okay, what did I do with them? The most satisfying part of that answer, I think, is when you have put service before self. You have accomplished things that are part of something bigger than you. You have done something significant for others. You have done something that contributes to the country and helps preserve our way of life. In closing, Kathy and I greatly value our Minnesota roots and always look forward to returning and reconnecting. Thank you for honoring me with this award and thanks to the Hill Murray community for continuing the standard of excellence that is Hill Murray. Thank you. Thank you so much, Tom, and congratulations again. I, uh, I can imagine when, when I hear stories often of um, Hill Murray, it starts with the sacrifice that parents made to make this education possible and you referencing your parents. I can imagine that they are looking down on you, Tom, as you enter, just like the rest of your family was with tears in their eyes and such pride for what you've accomplished. Thank you for representing the class of 1964 in Hill High School. talked about teachers being the heart and soul of the school, and I, I joined Hill Murray seven years ago, and our next award winner, along with Colleen, um, were two of the most important pieces of this institution. Jean Bush has been the heart of this school for so long, and she is so incredible. <laughs> so Laura Bush is the Hill Murray Heritage Award winner. The Hill Murray Heritage Award was established to honor the rich traditions of Hill Murray High School the culture and core values of the institution. Award, re award recipients represent accomplishments and contributions that reflect the spirit and tradition of Hill Murray, then and now. To introduce Jean Bush is Liz Merrick. It is truly an honor for me to be here tonight to introduce the amazing mentor, colleague, confidant, and dear friend that Jean is. I met Jean in the summer of 1994. I was a brand new French teacher. At that point, I was a mademoiselle, not a madame. And Colleen Jameson, another recipient, as well as Dr. Paul Caulfield. They hired me, thank you, merci. Jean had just returned from a year of maternity leave with her son, Joey. It could not have been easy to return to work that fall with four young children at home, one with special needs, and step into the role as department chair for a new group of department mem members to mentor. Jean jumped in with both feet. You would have never known that it was a challenge. She was the ultimate shoulder to cry on. Bolster when you needed bolstering, cheerleader, 
collaborator, and go-to for a hilarious story. She remembered every birthday or special event, showering us with cards and notes throughout the years. I honestly don't know how she kept track of it all. I have taken on the role of department chair recently, and let me just say, I am not doing half the job that she did. <clears throat> the expression, big shoes to fill, is an understatement. As you know, Jean was a classroom teacher of Spanish for 40 years. She sometimes had a roster of 140 kids, and you can bet that every single year, she knew every student's Spanish name, American name, parents' names, siblings' names, and more. To this day, she will recall a student that she taught in 1985, and she'll be able to recall his Spanish name, who he took to prom, where he sat in class, where he grew up, what sports he played, and the amazing project he turned in sophomore year. Her memory is uncanny. I think she finds it both a blessing and a curse. Jean brought many students abroad over the years, from service trips to Guatemala, as well as many trips to Mexico, Costa Rica, and Spain. For anyone who hasn't taken 12 to 38, yes, 38, teenagers that aren't your own to a foreign country, it is not a vacation. <laughs> from middle of the night sick kids to lost, and then thankfully found, students, it happened, and passports, it happened. From transportation snafus to mid-trip teen breakups, Jean was there to solve the problems and make it all better. She would usually be at the airport for departure the evening after teaching all day, and she'd return eight to 15 days later, often arriving back in Minnesota late that night, and voila, there was Jean the next day teaching her students. The impact that Jean has had on her colleagues, friends, former students, and their families cannot be stressed enough. I will leave you with just one story of the impact that Jean has had on her students and on Hillary. As many of you know, Jean and her son Joey often participate in the annual Step Up Walk for Down Syndrome at Como Park. Many Hillary students, faculty, and staff joined her on this walk, all in pioneer spirit wear to, to represent Hillary and to support Jean and Joey. One year while I was on this walk, I was walking around the lake. I ran into a woman that was in a master's degree program with me 10 years prior. She and I spent a few minutes catching up, of course, but she and her friend were wearing Hillary spirit wear, so I knew there was a Jean Bush story somewhere. Sure enough, she and her friend had taken Spanish with Senora Bush in the late 80s. They regaled me with hilarious tales of class with Senora, as well as their memories of an amazing trip to Mexico with Jean for spring break their junior year. It was clear that they loved Jean Bush, that they would show up at Como Lake 30 some years later to honor their dear teacher and her family <clears throat> brought tears to my eyes then and brings tears to my eyes now. Jean, I am so honored to know you and call you a treasured friend. You are the best person that I can think of to receive a Heritage Award. A synonym for heritage is a legacy. It is the most perfect and fitting award for you. What a legacy you have created here, Jean. Thank you for the many ways in which you have served your students, your colleagues, and our entire Hillary community. Congratulations on this award. It's my honor to be here tonight to receive one of the Heritage Awards for Hill Murray. I've always been proud, very proud to say that I'm a teacher at Hill Murray since the very beginning. I knew this place was very special. I remember when I started to wear a shirt or sweater with pioneers on it, my dad asked me where I got it. At the time, he didn't know that Hill Murray's mascot was the pioneers. My dad was a farmer and planted many crops of pioneer seed corn. 
I think you know where I'm headed with this because my dad had many um, apparel, many uh, coats and jackets and such from Pioneer Seed Corn, and I was building up my own of the Hillmory Pioneers. And so I wasn't taking any of his stuff. I think that's what he originally thought. Um, before I continue, um, I'd like to say that I would have never ended up at Hillmory had it not been for Jim Rowley. Jim, I know you've heard this story, but I, they haven't. I have to say it. Um, when I graduated from college in December of, of 1977, I was told I was preparing for a job teaching Spanish that probably would not exist. True. I started to substitute in the public schools of St. Paul and eventually ended up being a long-term sub at Durham Hall when it was just Durham Hall. At the end of that school year, which is now May of 78, Jim Raleigh called the principal at Durham Hall and asked if there were any Spanish teachers available, and there I was. It didn't take long before I ended up having an interview with Mr. Rollick. I guess we know how it turned out, so thank you, Jim, for giving me this opportunity and one that I've enjoyed for over four decades. Four decades, yes. I should also add that I had an interview with one of the honorees this evening, Colleen Jameson, who would be my first World Language Department Chair. We were both in our 20s when I interviewed with you. Thank you, Colleen, and congratulations on your award tonight. And I'm going to give a shout out to Mary Grouse Stump, because Mary and I have taught down the hall from each other for 40 years on different floors of this building. We had our kids together, same with Colleen, and all of that. Mr. Eisenbrenner was our, our principal, and he had a contract for me to sign, and I learned shortly after the, afterwards that I would call him Mr. A and that he was also the band director and wrote the Hill Marie School of Song. I thought that was pretty impressive. I did not have any of his kids in class, but I had some of his grandchildren and enjoyed them. When I would see them in their plays, concerts, playing in the pep band, I always thought of him and knew he was smiling down on them. And Mr. Relic, I had some of your children too, and they were, they were awesome. <laughs> I'd also like to thank my guests tonight, Lloyd, my husband, um, our, um, our sons, Mike, Tom, John, his fiance, Sophie, and her daughter, Lucy, and of course, Joey. For many years, you guys saw me correcting uh, quizzes, tests, making lesson plans through the years. When Tom was playing football for the University of Iowa, go Hawks, have to say it, I would always have my papers with me to correct on the drive to Iowa City, or wherever we were driving to. You guys gave me input on your on projects and I was, as I was grading them, and it was great to have another uh, opinion. I see doc, Dr. If Dr. Paul, you were Dr. Paul at that time, now Dr. Caulfield, and I'm gonna mention this because when Tom was playing for Iowa, you were my principal, and I remember going into Susan because of the bowl games that we would go to for the Hawkeyes, and I, it, it, sometimes those, those games would be um, after the Christmas break, you know, Hill Marie was already starting school, and I said, Susan, I said, this is what's going on, and she said, Jean, there's only one top, and it's, it's always a great memory. <laughs> to members of my department, some of who have been with me since the fall of 94, thank you for being creative, amazing, and hardworking language teachers who gave and still are giving everything every day. I was fortunate to be your department chair for 25 years and knew how lucky I was to have you. Liz, thank you for all you do in the French department. Kay, Michelle, and Weezy, thank you for being such awesome Spanish teachers. To my other guests, thank you for your friendship and support throughout my years at Hill Murray. You are all friends whose lives are wrapped around the dance of teaching. I've been fortunate to t teach hundreds of students, and I see a lot of you sitting here and there tonight, which is um, brings back memories. And it's you know a few at the table: um, Bar Peterson from the class of '86, Weezy Rochet from the class of '91, and Pam Thurston Schultze from the class of '82. Um, the last two have become and still are amazing Spanish teachers. I also might add that our recent homecoming, uh, how awesome that was and how great it was to see alumni and former teachers and, and all of that, and I always enjoy that part. I remember my first day of teaching here, the fall of 78, 
as I said, I, I, Colleen um, was my department chair. When I signed my contract, I was still Jean Callahan. I mentioned that to Mr. A that I would start the year as Jean Bush as we got married the middle of August. When the students got their schedules, it still said Callahan on it. So for each class, and I believe I taught in three different classrooms that year, and so with chalk in hand, remember we had blackboards, I wrote Senora Bush on the board. All went well except for one class. Pam and Pat, where's Pat Sauer? You guys weren't part of that, this one class that I'm gonna mention, but you were in those classes back in the fall of, of 78. So a group of sophomore boys in unison, after I wrote Senora Bush, uh, did that Bush beer commercial. Bush. And um, I, I will never forget it. Now keep in mind, I had just turned 23 at the time, and it was my first day of teaching. And so uh, all that I could think of doing was saying, you guys can do better than that. And so I made them repeat it a few times, and I knew that that class would be a great way to end my day as they kept me on my, on my toes. Those sophomore boys are now 58 years old. And uh, so, and lately, uh, I have been actually seeing those semi-trucks with Bush, and it puts a smile on my face. Um, <coughs> excuse me, my passion for the language began when I went to Mexico at the end of my senior year in high school. I wanted Hillary students to have that same experience. Liz had mentioned um, the, the many trips we took students on. Um, there were 25 trips in all. Yes, um, Mexico City um, and other areas of that uh, country. And then um, Michelle Corrales and I took a group to Costa Rica. And after that, Pam Thurston Chelsea encouraged us to travel to Guatemala and have our students do service work at the Mission of San Lucas. We began that in 2008 and went every other year up until 2018. Michelle and I made a great team as chaperones and Pam made sure everything was set up for us in Guatemala because of her years of experience and contacts. Believe it or not, I was able to take a group to Cuba in 2018. Where is Don Blake? Don, where are you? Yes, Don. Uh, Don Blake, a former history teacher at Hill Murray, said if we don't do this now, it may not happen, and he was right. Um, and I can't forget to mention that Liz had a wonderful idea of combining French and Spanish students for a Spain-France trip in 2011. And um, anyway, that, that was a, um, a memorable trip as well as the others. And I'm hoping that all the Hill Murray students have lifelong memories of these trips. My sons were able to join me on some of these trips as they got older, and it was great to have them with me. Fifteen years ago, Michelle and I started to bring awareness to Hill Murray by celebrating Hispanic Heritage Month. We chose a week to do a variety of activities over the PA, in the cafeteria. We had displays um, in different areas of the school. We had a live mariachi band that was playing right here. And we also took students to Our Lady Guadalupe Church for volunteer work during Christmas and also Lent. I'm very proud of the work we did in the Spanish-speaking community. I've talked about my sons earlier and want them to know how proud I am of them. They've all ended up in the education profession, Mike in counseling, and John and Sophie are both teachers. John is currently working on his principal licensure, Sophie on her master's. Tom has just completed his uh, licensure in ELL and ES, ESL, yes. They are also wonderful big brothers to Joey. He is really the one who should be getting this award tonight. <laughs> Joey, you can stand up if you want. Um, Joey feels like he belongs here, and that is because of the Hillary community, how wonderful it's been to him. The students and staff, parents, high five them when they see them or they stop to chat. <laughs> and we hope um, to continue the walk for Down syndrome. It's always in September. Um, and it, it's always great to see, as Liz mentioned, the people showing up in their Kilmarie spirit wear. And um, it's, it's been great. Um, the students recently gave him a, a Hill Murray super fan sweatshirt and the student council arranged a drive-by birthday for him 
in January of this past year. It was a, it was a special moment and we will never forget it. So I am very uh, forever, forever thankful and grateful for Hill Murray and thank you again. Thank you. It's pretty easy to talk about your brother. Good things and bad things. But these are mostly good. Uh, Father Greg uh, cannot be here, could not be here yet because of health reasons. And he asked me if I would be willing to uh, accept this award for him. And I said, that won't be too hard. I said, I spent 17 years at home. And I wouldn't trade those 17 years for anything. They were the best years of our life, down my pole. You know, it was a great time of our life. So, Greg, probably first off, would probably say congratulations to all the award winners. He is very grateful about and honored to receive this award. Uh, in terms of what he has done, he's been an archdiocesan priest for over 50 years. He, uh, he's probably, I, I would say, one of the most faithful priests in the, in the whole archdiocese of St. Paul, Minneapolis. He's had numerous, numerous positions in the archdiocese, different parishes. He's, I believe he was at six parishes before he accepted, accepted this big job. And the big job was nobody would take it. And he said, I took a job that nobody wanted. And they said, what was that? And he said, well, he said, nobody wanted to go to the prison. And so he became the chaplain of Stillwater State Prison for 25 years. So you can imagine the stories that he's encountered over those 25 years. In fact, uh, the people down at uh, Assumption Parish, where he, that's where his last day was, whenever I run into some of the people that I know down there, and that's where we attend church, they all say, oh, we love his stories. We love his stories about the, the prison and some of the people that he's met. And it's amazing, uh, one of the things I found out later on that uh, whenever there was a trouble with, a, with one of the prisoners or something went out was bad happening, they'd always refer him to Greg. They'd send him down to his office. And he would straighten things out and, and work with them. And it's amazing how many people have come back over the years and thanked him for all that he did during those 25 years. Uh, I could go on and on and on in stories about 
guys that came back and, and thanked him for, for the, you know, just the counseling that he gave them. And just the words of encouragement to change their life. And, uh, and I'm very proud of that. I mean, I, when I talk to him, I, I say, geez, Greg, you had a, that was a tough job, wasn't it? He said, yeah. But he said, you know what? It enabled me to get back to Hill Murray. And Hill Murray wanted him to come here. And he said, he went to the warden and he said, uh, you know, how about if I go to Hill Murray a couple days a week? You know, say mass and counsel some of the, the students or whatever. If anyone wants to talk uh, religion or whatever. And uh, he said, well, he said, maybe it would be good. Greg said, you know what? It'd be good for my sanity. <laughs> so, so he said, sure. You can go. You can go to Hill Murray during. You usually come. You be here about half a day usually, and it, and it grew. It wasn't usually. It was one day a week, and then it became two days a week, and then three days a week. He he take time to be here, and and serve with the students. And he thoroughly said that his time at Hill Murray was was a great time. Uh, he loved being here. He loved meeting the people that we, that he worked with, and and. He just said it was a great experience for him. Uh, his, in describing Greg, I, I would probably say three things about him. And I'll give a little version of what, what he did. Uh, he's a real people person. And he tries to correct a lot of, a lot of things that are, are bad in our society where people don't have a place to sleep or don't have a place to live or whatever. I never talked about this, he's a very humble person, but he used to go around to second-hand stores and buy shoes, gloves, coats. And he, during the winter months when things got cold, he would drive in the bad areas of St. Paul in Minneapolis and pass out. He'd open up his trunk and say, you need a pair of shoes. Well, a guy would come in, he'd try on the fiber, oh, these fit. You know, and they'd say, take them. And that's what he did. And nobody really knew about that. That was something that he just kept to himself. Now that, that again, that was his, his humility. Uh, so he was a people person, and he, and he loved dealing with that issue. Uh, he was a priest who also lived and basically spread the gospel. Uh, he was a true priest, in my estimation. And I've had a lot of people come back to me and say that, that he's one of the greatest priests that they've ever, ever encountered. And they used to love his, his homilies and the, and the things he would say at, at Mass. And so, he, you know, I, I would say that he's a holy man with great humility. That's how I would describe him. And as a brother, I'm very proud to say that, that he was a, a holy man. And he is. And the way he lived his life. And I know he wishes he could be here tonight. He did write a letter, and I'll read the letter to you, that he passed on to me states, one of my simple joys has been writing vocations for various occasions. My most recent honor was to welcome Don and Jean Regan into the Catholic Athletic Association Hall of Fame. The Hill Murray contact is obvious and well deserved. John and Jean spent their lives deepening the soul of so many places. It was here that Judy Schwartz approached me with the news that I had been selected as one of the recipients of the Father Greg Tolles Award, I must admit I was completely stunned, only because I thought of myself as someone who just liked to hang around and take in the ongoings of a Catholic school. Sometimes I never enjoyed something that he never enjoyed as a seminarian. I believe a community award is an expression of the spirit and the soul of the place. It is about a community that shares a legacy. It is just as much about a student acknowledging a favorite teacher or a coach as it is the opposite. Father Greg told us, in his courageous life, warrants attention. And we all know that he suffered from a, a very tough disease. His courageous life warrants only attention. He became a student teacher to so many homecomings, anniversaries, tournaments, liturgies, they're all about an enduring focus that allow us to shout out. We've got spirit, yes we do. From the depths of our soul, we do. I am honored and thank you for this award. 
Thank you so much, Terry, for being here. You had an opportunity to roast your brother, and you didn't take advantage of that, so I'm sure he appreciates that. We will share the video with him, uh, and what a gentleman you were. So thank you to you and your family, uh, and everything you represent for Hill Murray. So, uh, our next award winner is Dr. Cindy Whitney. She is being introduced by Pat Sauer, a fellow classmate of the class of 1982. The Ron Ryan Jr. Community Service Award. This award honors alumni and friends who demonstrate a commitment to leadership in their communities. The recipient may be parents of alumni, parents of current students, alumni, or friends of the Hill Murray School. Please help me in welcoming Pat Sauer to introduce Dr. Cindy Quinn. Great to come back from, uh, you know, the, what they call the west side to uh, God's side of the river. So, so glad to be here. Who's Cindy Whitney, a.k.a. Wiener Dog? You know, I was just a classmate. We ended up going to two proms as friends, so there's no nepotism here. Um, but I do want to say that she was, you know, very impressive person, very humble, very talented, and... Uh, you know what did I know about her? I know she played basketball and softball from, from freshman year to senior year. She was in band from uh, freshman year through junior year. She was part of the student council, vice president, I believe. And uh, she was also our valedictorian of the class of 1982. Interesting enough, I know John, John Hughes, you brought the, uh, our, our uh, yearbook. But in it, it says, her ambition was to earn a respectable nickname. Well, I hope that we can prove that tonight. Um, you know, after, after graduating uh, from Hill Murray, she went on to an engineering science and mechanics um, degree at the Iowa State University of Science and Technology. From there, uh, she went to the University of Minnesota Medical School and became a doctor um, and then she went on to um, Harvard University, where she got her master's in public health. You know, she's board certified in both internal medicine and is certified professional organizations of uh, public health and internal medicine. Um, what's interesting is that's not the end of her education. She went on to um, earn for two years, she was in the Epidemic Intelligence Service class of Childhood and Respiratory Diseases branch down at the CDC, where she worked for 25 years. Now, I did my research on the Ron Ryan Jr. Award, and what I was amazed at is 1994, five months before that tragic incident, um, he was given the Medal of Merit for saving three children from a burning home. And so I think that his public service and his, you know, saving these children is really a parallel to what we're going to discuss now as I address a few of her um, many accomplishments. Now, what's interesting is I asked Cindy, I said, can you helped me with some of the information, and she was very generous. She sent me her curriculum vitae, which was 40 pages long. <laughs> so I'm going to try to synopsize and yet do her justice in this um, endeavor. Um, but she spent 25 years at the U.S. Centers of Disease Control and Prevention, 
She served as an epidemiologist. She served as a team lead and branch, and branch chief. But she was focused on respiratory infections, surveillance, outbreak response, and vaccine policy development and evaluation. She also led CDC-wide emergency response task forces for SARS, Ebola in West Africa, the H1N1 influenza pandemic, Legionnaire's disease, Flint, Michigan's lead poisoning uh, in the water, um, that issue, and uh, Florida's Zika virus response. You know, in Cindy, um, she's so humble, but she's a world-renowned subject matter expert on pneumococcal disease, vaccines, and control measures. Don't worry, I had, to, I had to refer to the medical dictionary as well. But anyway, with her, multiple, with her multiple invitations to speak at major infectious disease conferences, public health meetings, responding, responding to public press inquiries and pneumococcal disease and vaccine issues, Cindy has increased the public awareness of pneumococcal disease and has moved scientific understanding forward in those areas of scientific study. Dr. Whitney has published over 250 scientific publications on topics such as pneumococcal disease, epidemiology, drug resistance, respiratory disease, neonatal sepsis, and disease outbreaks. 191 of her publications have been peer-reviewed and published in major scientific journals to include the Journal of American Medical Association, New England Journal of Medicine, and Nature Medicine in addition to others. She has 89 peer-reviewed uh, journal articles. She has written nine book chapters um, in her area of expertise, and she has seven study team contributions in addition to that. She's got a number of awards from the presidential level and the secretary level of the United States. And she continues to be a frequent consultant for the World, Hospital, or World Health Organization in addition to other organizations. In the last three years, Cindy has served as the executive director and principal investigator for child health and mortality prevention surveillance, also known as CHAMPS at Emory University down in Atlanta, Georgia, in their Division of Infectious Diseases. Cindy is married to Dr. Scott Friedkin, another CDC um, associate. They have two kids, Daniel and Allison. And in her spare time, Cindy volunteered for years of coaching in t-ball, baseball, basketball, parents association, classroom parent, and currently serves uh, the Atlanta Community Food Bank, Georgia Voter Hotline, and Padilla Quilters Association. So, well-rounded. So one of the most important questions remain. Has Cindy successfully earned a respectable nickname? And I think she has. But again, it's an absolute honor for me to present Dr. Cynthia Whitney as the 2021 Ron Ryan Jr. Award winner. I believe she has earned it, and they have definitely um, shared their passion in the pediatric area, saving children. So with that regard, um, I you know, would love to present this in person to Cynthia. However, she's still fighting the current pandemic in her current position. And she actually sent me a few, uh, she actually sent me a letter that um, I could read to you to this evening. Um, good evening, thank you Pat for the kind introduction and to the distinguished alumni and community awards committee for so graciously awarding me with this honor. And congratulations to all the other award winners. Getting recognized has left me feeling humble especially because of all the great alumni and community members
who are out there changing the world. I want to give a special greeting to Ron Ryan's family and to say that I am touched to be given an award bearing his name. I'm sorry that I am not there with you in person. I heard the dinner is being held in what used to be the cafeteria where I was in high school there. I'm very, I'm very curious if Pat is speaking from where he and the other cool kids used to sit and have lunch, or if it's closer to where I would have sat with either the nerds or the jocks. <laughs> She'll have to get the scoop on that later. I'm not there because of COVID. I'm sure you all agree with me when I say enough of this pandemic already. And also, get your shots and wear your mask. Wouldn't it be great if this last wave was really the last wave of our pandemic? I graduated from Hill Murray a bazillion years ago. I knew after taking calculus with Brother Martin and advanced biology with Jim Johnson, that I wanted to do something with my life involving science and math. I was lucky enough to find my way to a career as an epidemiologist at the U.S. Centers of Disease Control and Prevention, and now with Emory University. The only thing about this pandemic is that I now, that I now don't have to explain to y'all what an epidemiologist is. <laughs> She's still down there in Georgia. Okay. The Ron Ryan Award is for leadership in the community. During my career as an epidemiologist, I learned how important communities are to keeping people safe and healthy. Unfortunately, the need for a strong community becomes more obvious when things are falling apart. For example, in Flint, Michigan, when children were exposed to lead in the water, or at the southern U.S. border, when children became ill after traveling hundreds of miles to escape violence in the communities that they used to call home. Or when an epidemic, when an epidemic caused by Ebola virus devastates entire communities in West, in West Africa. Or an epidemic of meningitis terrorizes a country in Asia. These are some of the health issues I worked on during my time at the CDC. In spite of the challenges of the politics, I would recommend to anyone to take a job in government service. Some of the most rewarding aspects were when I could help make a new health policy or guidelines and see the benefits for reducing deaths and severe illnesses over time. I now have a new role leading a program at Emory University in partnership with groups around the world. The program tries to understand why children die in such high numbers in areas of Africa and South Asia. I work in faraway places with peoples who, whose cultures are very different from the one I grew up in. In spite of these differences, it's clear that people and communities everywhere want more or less the same thing, safety, health, and opportunities, especially for their children. I want to close there and say thanks again for this honor to Judy Schwartz for what I'm sure was a wonderful dinner and event, and for Pat, me, I guess, for <laughs> nominating me and accepting on my behalf. Have a great night, everyone. So, with that, I want to recognize Certain is that 
as I listen to the stories, um, you know, Ronnie ran to people who were in trouble and had problems. It sounds like Cindy's doing the same work. And um, they were always willing to step up and do the hard work that others weren't willing to do. Um, before we move forward, I just want to say thank you to the Ryan family who has been so important to this school and to the sacrifice that Ron made um, to his legacy living through some of these alumni who are being named uh, in his honor as well as the scholarship that you hold at the school. So thank you to the Ryan family. award is the Benedictine Award. Sister Catherine Schoenker. Introduction will be done by Jim Rollo. The LaSallian and Benedictine Awards. The Sisters of St. Benedict of St. Paul's Monastery founded Archbishop Murray Memorial High School in 1985 or 1958 to provide a Catholic education for girls living on the east side of St. Paul. The Christian Brothers founded by St. John Baptiste de La Salle Staff Hill High School, established in 1959 for boys living on the east side of St. Paul. When the two schools merged to become Hill Murray School in 1971, both charisms of the founding religious orders were embraced. The LaSallian and Benedictine Awards are meant to honor the past and present faculty, staff, volunteers, alumni, and friends of Hill Murray who, through their commitment to Catholic education and students of Hill, Archbishop Murray and Hill Murray embody the charisms of the founding religious orders. To accept the award and to introduce Sister Catherine Schoenker, please help welcoming Jim Rowley. destroy that reputation. <clears throat> Young outcome. I think it's really appropriate that, that we recognize and remember both the brothers and the Benedictines and the importance of their part in our history. They're really the core of Hill, Hill Archbishop Murray and Hill Murray. And there's a lady that I'm representing tonight that I think is the epitome of a Benedictine. Sister Catherine Schoenacher is from New Prague, which is the hotbed of Bohemians, but she's very proud of her German heritage. She joined the Benedictines along with her good friend, Sister Cleo Schoenacher, in 1950. So Sister Catherine has been a member of the Benedictine Order for a little over 70 years. And I just want to touch on a couple items to give you a little taste of what, what she's like. She served on the merger committee at the time that they were putting the two schools together. She served on the administrative team for five years during our early years, and that's when I became friends with her and have been friends with her for over 50 years. She was part of the administration and you know, some of us were kind of known as traffic cops, but she was known as the Velvet Hammer. Because when she corrected, she did it so nicely, whereas some of the rest of us thought we were really being tough, macho. If I had to do it over, I might do it a little different. She's primarily an elementary teacher, spent a lot of years in Stillwater, where she happened to be the fourth grade teacher of Father Peter Williams, who was our pastor at St. Ambrose. She spent a lot of years at uh, St. Odelia in Shoreview. She served in the Priory as an assistant to the Prioress a number of times, was never the, the chief, but was always an assistant, and that's just her personality. For a number of years, she was in charge of the care unit at the Priory, and of course, as they were growing older, there were more and more members in that unit, and she was in charge of that for quite a while. In recent years, she has developed the habit of going around in the evening with holy water, 
blessing you, blessing your room, greeting you, saying an evening prayer with you. In her 90s, Sister Catherine is as sharp or sharper than any of us. She has all her faculties. She has a marvelous sense of humor. She has a very strong commitment to the Benedictines. She's very happy with her vocation. She talks very fondly of Hillary High School, and she's very proud to get this award. Thank you. Thank you, Jim, and thank you for uh, representing Sister Catherine and being here to represent uh, the school and the long history and your relationship and partnership with her. Um, I know that she values that as well and wishes she could be here with us today. Uh, the LaSallian Award winner, um, we're going to turn it up a little bit now if you guys have not met this next award winner, so like it went from quiet to it's going to get kind of loud. Biz is as good as they get, right? Am I right? I love Biz. So, Elizabeth Amara, the introduction is going to be done by Jane Wagmaker and the LaSallian Award winner. As I mentioned earlier, the LaSallian Award is named after the brothers who helped found the school and brought the two uh, groups together, the charisms and everything that they embrace as a school. So please welcome Jane to introduce this. <laughs> it may be time for head, shoulders, knees, and toes or something, I, I don't know, but um, most of us can't touch our toes. <laughs> it is really an honor and a privilege for me to be able to be here tonight to introduce really my best friend, Ms. O'Meara. We met in first grade at presentation, and she really should be recognized for her service to the community. Going to camp together getting in trouble together, taking risks together, serving together. And one attribute that has always run through for Biz is her constant concern for other people. Biz has been involved in Girl Scouting all her life, and because of that background, has brought service to a level that most of us will never achieve. After getting a degree in social work, Biz worked with the struggling and forgotten on housing projects and camps, and following her master's degree, she went to work for the United Way, training loan executives from large companies, including 3M and Target. And in her tenure at the United Way, Biz raised millions of dollars to fund various projects and people. And over the years, Biz has been not only a Girl Scout leader, but a Boy Scout leader, a caregiver, served on the Archbishop Murray Memorial Class of 66 reunion committee every year, every time, and as our class representative. She's an active member of the Green Hats, which is an alumni Girl Scout group. She served on many boards, too many to, to count, and is currently serving at Oak Meadows Senior Living in Oakdale. Biz was an original board member of the Emergency Fund Service, which later became Second Harvest. Biz has received many Chamber of Commerce and Service Awards, but she's not one to mention the awards she receives, so I suspect there are many more stashed away in her memory boxes at home. The LaSallian School calls its members to an awareness of the poor and victims of injustice and responds to their needs through programs of community service, advocacy, and justice education. This core principle is expressed through the Lasallian ideal, enter to learn, learn to serve. This award truly speaks of the life that Biz has been so actively a part of, totally deserving of being recognized for her commitment to others. It is my honor and privilege 
to introduce everyone's best friend, Biz Elizabeth O'Hara. Thank you. 
but we are too serious here tonight at Rewards uh, Banquet for Biz to show her true colors, but she is awesome. Yeah. You did great. Well, Judy knows the new one is Biz attracts lots of people, as you can imagine. That's why she's good at fundraising and uh, great at planning uh, our events for our alumni. So thanks so much, Biz. Our next award winner is Mike Ack Ackerson. He'll be introduced by Jim Rollick, the Legacy Teacher Award. The Legacy Teacher Award honors a former teacher for his or her impact in the Hill Murray School community and contributions they have made to the educational profession. They have shown a mastery in their field and have inspired students to make significant contributions to the world. Please help me in welcoming Jim Rollick, who will introduce Mike Hatters. teacher is a superstar, and that's what these two people are. Both Colleen and Mike are East Side superstars of the highest quality, and I'm proud to be their friend for over 50 years. Mike is a proud graduate of Creighton High School. <laughs> Actually, he is very proud. He's still very active in the class of 1954. He speaks very fondly of his four years at Creighton. He can, we don't have to, but he can. <laughs> After he graduated from Creighton, he started at the U, and about halfway through his first year, he signed a contract in pro baseball with the Dodgers. He's a lefty, he's a pitcher. So he went into the minors and struggled in the minors for a couple of years and decided this isn't for him. So he gave up his baseball career, came back and went back to uh, education both at the U and at St. Cloud, got his degree, student taught in Roseville, and took a teaching job in the new Christian Brothers High School on the east side, Hill High School, where they had just opened, and Mike signed the contract to be a teacher and a coach, and he worked there for 10 years, taught sociology, political science, FIA. When Mike came to Hill Murray, he was very much brother-dominated. As time went on, the lay staff began to evolve and emerge, and as we look back at Hill back in those days, I don't think we realized what an important, spectacular group of people they had, and I want to mention a few of them. Ralph Costello, who went on to teach at uh, Century College. Jack Bohr, very famous English teacher at Hill. Tom Horak, who went on to become the president at Century and again over at Normandale. John Bowen, who managed the uh, Metropolitan Council, Bob Sullivan, who went on to coach at the college level at Carleton, uh, Jim Wold, who became a superintendent in a number of cities in Minnesota, uh, Albert Lee is one of them, has done some co co consulting work with uh, Hill Murray recently, Andre Ballou, who went on to uh, coach the Minnesota North Stars, Terry Skrypeck, who coached here at Hillmer and then went on to coach at the University of St. Thomas. Bill Lester, who was involved in all of the stadium work and was a manager of the Metrodome and very prominent in Twin City politics. Jim Johnson, who became prominent in the administration at Hillmer and Mike Atkinson. All of these people, and there are a number of others that I don't want to go through all of them, all of these people indicate to me, and maybe to you, what the quality of that place was, and I think we forget about that sometimes. When we get together with alumni from Hill, and, and, and names keep surfacing, Mike's name is 
very common. People talk about Eckerson with respect. He was a great teacher, really enjoyed his class. It's surprising how many people refer to Mike as one of their favorite teachers. When I think of Mike Eckerson, um, I'm going to talk about two or three or four more personal things that, that I recall. I said that he taught FIED and political science and sociology. And I remember the first day I went into the coach's office and sitting next to his desk down in the FIED office was his Board of Education. Now you at Hill Murray may not be familiar with the Board of Education, but if you had anything to do with Hill or Christian Brothers School, you probably do remember it. It was very imposing. It looked like a canoe paddle. It was made out of plank with holes in it. You know, I never saw it used, but boy, it sure had an effect. I remember a faculty meeting in Bill Lester's home. It was back in the years when we didn't get any kind of a salary increase, but we were promised his bonus at Christmas time. And Brother Lewis called us together to say, I don't think we can give you the bonus. And Brother Lewis and Mike Ackerson are like this. <laughs> and believe it or not, they each exchanged a little light blow to the arm in their discussion. We did get the bonus, by the way. <laughs> One of the important aspects of Hill High School was camaraderie. Mike was a very important part of that. Gatherings after games, special gatherings in the brother's home, especially Friday after school. They were very interesting. But above all, when I think of Mike, I think of professionalism. Professional lifetime teacher. After the 10 years at Hill, he went on to Inver Grove Junior College, Inver Hills. Worked there for 27 years, held a number of positions there, including president of the uh, faculty. He was a representative, representative in, as a lobbyist for the state of Minnesota, very active in politics. And so, to me, a, leg a legacy teacher is a building block, someone that we can look back at and build on. And both Mike and Colleen, I think, fill the bill admirably. Please join me in congratulating Mike Ackerson. Three years in a row, they closed Hill. 
The first year, the parents met with us and kept it open. I remember some of my students' parents, particularly 3M, and they, we had a salary schedule there. And they said, Mike, is this how much money you make? And I said, yes. You gotta leave. He said, come over to 3M. We actually pay people to work. <laughs> we had a wonderful faculty, as Jim mentioned. I was going to say some of the same things. Those names resonate. What a wonderful faculty we had. Just think. Some more here. Terry. Terry Stripeck. Jimmy Wolf. Tom Horak. Etc. Etc. We had a spirit decor that, that is unmatched. Before I get into some of these things, I do want to spend just a minute. I'd like to recognize some special people here tonight. First of all, my family. They're over there. If you'd all just stand, please, and say hi. We have 133 years of teaching experience in the family. Uh, some of them are there. Not everyone's here. Uh, the people from Texas didn't make it up. And some of the grandsons are matriculating there in college. So I thank them. I do have a special award. Uh, this is a legacy award that I'm getting. I'd like to present a legacy award, the Legacy Mom of the Century. To my wife, Karen, who raised five kids, we had, <laughs> I'll tell you the story. Uh, when, when I signed a contract at Hill, uh, they, they gave me $3,500. That was a year, not a month. $100 for every baby. So Karen and I had a baby almost every year. <laughs> for five years. I did not major in math, as you can see. Anyway, Karen raised five kids, nine grandkids. She is the consummate mom. So, legacy award to Karen Ackerson. Karen, if you can, please stand. As Jim mentioned, I, I truly, truly enjoyed my time at Hill. I had 10 wonderful years. I would like to mention that some of the people that were in my classes are here tonight. I truly appreciate that. Uh, John's right in front of me here, looking at me like, hurry this up, please. <laughs> Table back there with the Mulgrens, Dick. Where's Bob? Bobby? Lawrence? Yeah. He had to leave. Bob's dealing with some health issues. Sure appreciate him coming. I did get some phone calls. I also have some special guests. Uh, these are my racquetball buddies. And this summer now, wiffle ball buddies. You play wiffle ball? It is a great game. It's a lot of fun. So they're back on that table. You guys want to say hi? When I was at uh, Inver Hills, after I left Hill, back to that story, the reason I left, that was the first year. The second year, the Archdiocese, the Archbishop came out and said, we will keep you open one more year. Then the third year, <laughs> there's a pattern here, said, that's it. This is the last year. Karen and I had five kids, $500, and uh, so I had to find a different job. And so through the help of some of the people that were here, another story, I got an interview for a job at Inver Hills Community College as a sociology instructor, history instructor, brand new school, just like Hill. We were pioneers. We had Hill, Inver Hills, Hill, Inver Hills. I came over for the uh, interview, and, they said, oh, Mike Ackerson, we've heard a lot about you. When can you start? Isn't that a great interview? So they didn't even know if I had a degree. 
But I started there in 1972 and worked there for 27 years. I'm a product of St. Paul Public School, or Catholic schools. I went to Sacred Heart on the east side of St. Paul, St. Stanislaus, down on West 7th Street. And uh, as Jim mentioned, and I won't whisper it because I'm proud of it, I went to Creighton High School, and I love high school. I'm always surprised when Hill students, Creighton students that I know, say I, I hated high school. Crazy? Really? Wonderful, wonderful. What a career. I am blessed. As Jim mentioned, I was pretty active at, at the college. i very active with the faculty association. I love teaching at the college level. I truly love teaching at Inver Hills or at Hill High School. Um, Jim mentioned the traditions of a Cretan boy, Christian brothers coming to Hill, Christian Brothers, Brother Lewis, some of you know of Brother Lewis, uh, he hired me and uh, we had a long relationship. He was my principal at Creighton and uh, the brothers were a major part, part of those early years. We had about half and half, if I remember right, 1961 or so, half the staff, brothers, half the staff, lay people. By time I left, um, it was probably 90% lay and maybe 10% of Soul Brothers. I'd like to uh, dedicate this award because I truly, as Jim mentioned, feel that there were so many wonderful, beautiful, well-educated, committed, people that taught at, at Hill. So I'd like to take this award, accept this award, um, in recognition of all those people and others that Jim mentioned. There's an old axiom in teaching <laughs> that the mind can absorb only as much as the seat can endure. So you've endured a long time. And so I thank you very much again for this honor and uh, God bless. Thank you so much, Mike, and congratulations on your award. Uh, love the history of your family, 130 plus years in education. Especially love having your grandchildren here with you today. So thank you for everything you represent for Hill Marie and being with the school and staff. Our final award winner, Colleen Jameson. Uh, here to introduce Colleen is Katie Jameson, a 2000 grad. Um, Colleen Jameson, I, I'll share just a brief story and then I'll let Katie uh, speak. But, um, you know, there were lots of welcoming things when I came to Hill Murray seven, seven years ago. Uh, Lex was at the door when I got there. He was my hockey coach and Gene and others that were there. Um, but one thing I observed in the school is um, Sue had hired me. And, and so I, was, I didn't have a lot to do at that time. So I was just kind of observing what was happening in the office. And one thing that struck me was that when we were making difficult decisions, or Sue had extra stress in her life, she would bring down Colleen to consult. And so how often a leader of an institution will bring down a trusted colleague, somebody who has reported to them for years, was just eye-opening to me, like, this is somebody who can be trusted and is a leader in our school and has been with our school and, and really shaped who Hilbert is. So I'm excited that Colleen's receiving this award, the Legacy Teacher Award, it honors a former teacher for his or her impact on the Hill Murray community and the contributions they have made to the education profession. 
They have shown mastery in their field and have inspired students to make significant contributions in the world. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Katie to introduce Colleen James. longer than my short 15 years. You see, the day I showed up here, I didn't know many kids, but I knew a vast majority of the staff. I, I distinctly recall feeling proud, honored, and excited to finally be a Hill Murray pioneer and to join my mom's community. It had been a couple of years since she had shifted from un super professeur français to leading peer tutoring and peer listening programs and the school's accreditation process and goal setting. As a 15-year-old kid, I was already keenly aware of my mom's impact on her students as an educator. We had quite a few French students as babysitters, and teenagers talk. <laughs> Teaching assistants from French, German, and Spanish-speaking countries in our lives, mentors from a rock star language department chaired by our mom, that took students to Europe every other summer when we were kids. An exchange program where French students came here, and in fifth grade, I was in the Christmas Carol, and the big high school kids always said hi to me because of my mom. I definitely could not grasp at the time the lifelong skills I was about to build, and how my time at Kilmory, along with my siblings, Sarah and Brian, and the many, many, many students who were lucky to call our mom Madame Jameson or Miss J, would shape significant parts of our future professional lives. When she invited me to introduce her for this Legacy Award, naturally, I reached out to a couple of the experts for some input, Sarah and Ryan, who also know mom as an educator. And unsurprisingly, they indicated some of the same themes I had in my notes. Notes that echo conversations I had with the hundreds of former students, colleagues, friends, and family who came to her retirement party here in 2017. Kali, that's what we call her, is engaging and memorable as a peer listening trainer. Many of her former peer listeners are our lifelong friends and have indicated to us how much they use their peer listening skills every day as professionals. She trained hundreds of peer tutors who then inspired and mentored students younger than them, directly impacting their educational success. She was a fun teacher, and she can command the room and made you want to be part of what she was teaching. She inspired hundreds of students, in, in hundreds of students, a love of travel and appreciation for foreign cultures, often leading them on their first excursion outside the United States. I was lucky to get to chaperone trips with her and with Liz twice as an adult and be part of this tradition. I learned that Brian recently asked Holly more about her work in the school improvement accreditation area and that she was instrumental in including speaking as part of the curriculum across the school. We both agreed how impactful that was and how little public speaking both of us did in college. Hillary set us up to be able to speak confidently and professionally, a skill we both use regularly. Her colleagues respect her, and they knew, with her leading school improvement, that their time spent would be meaningful and relevant in their individual classrooms. She's passionate about students' understanding and learning, and fiercely loyal to them as people. She's caring. She's a genius at finding that balance that is so important as a teenager between friend, mentor, and teacher a balance that respects boundaries and builds trust. 
But overall, what has the most significant impact? We as her former students use the skills she taught us every single day, personally and professionally. Everything she did as an educator was setting students up for their future lives, building lifelong learning, listening, critical thinking, and empathy skills. We are so grateful for our Homer experience. Earlier today, I asked Judy Schwartz for the description of qualifications for the Legacy Teacher Award. It includes descriptors such as excellence, inspiring students, significant contributions, and impact. On behalf of our family and the thousands of students whose lives she impacted as an educator, I am honored to introduce our mom, Colleen Jameson, as she receives this Hillmarie Legacy Teacher Award. So glad you put me last. Peg, you were first, I'm last. I must humbly say that I am honored to receive this Legacy Teaching Award. In fact, I might say again, how lucky am I? Lucky to spend my life's work as a teacher and then be recognized with a Teaching Legacy Award here tonight with you fine folks. Countless thanks to those who made this award possible for me, even back to my mom, who listened to me when I started high school, came home the first week of school pleading to take French. I was signed up for a full year of typing, but was fascinated with the posters in my homeroom teacher's classroom of the Eiffel Tower, some fancy avenue with cars driving around this big arch, and a, I think a famous cathedral with a spire that reached to the sky. Now go on. Please, Mom. Can I take French? Et voilà, me voici, un professeur de français. Yeah, that, I'm a French teacher. <laughs> Is that how this legacy began? Perhaps. All I can tell you is that back in August of 1976, I rolled into the Hillmary main office to drop off my French teaching application to Jim Raleigh. I immediately found myself in an impromptu interview and out the door with a new job. <laughs> Not only was I teaching French, but Mr. Ashenbrenner asked me to be in charge of the pom-pom dance line. <laughs> that was a little tougher, actually. <laughs> As Mademoiselle McGovern, I navigated these halls filled with close to 1,500 students. My second year, I was now Madame Jameson, which gives me the chance to thank you, Don, my husband, for being on this journey with me. You have always been supportive and active as we became Hillmary parents in an 11-year span with Katie and Sarah and Brian, doing theater, girls golf and basketball, cross country, boys basketball, and baseball. As Katie mentioned, I had the gift of teaching my three kids in my peer listening course and having my wonderful son-in-law, Mike, in my peer tutoring program. Mm, that was a good thing because it sparked a future gift. Katie and Mike getting married. My beautiful granddaughters, Ellie and Abby, the youngest in the crowd here, have been perfect all night. <laughs> and a super bonus for Don and I is Brian's beautiful wife, Katie. As my family was growing and changing, so was my teaching life here at Hill Murray. From French teacher and world language department chair to peer helping teacher and school accreditation chair. Thanks, Susan. Geez, that's a lot over a long period of time. So is that my legacy? Teacher, accreditation chair, or is it that I was the first person to ever teach here for 41 years? Who does that? 
Well, I'm not alone in that category anymore because here tonight at our family dinner table is my dear, newly retired colleague and friend, Mary Grosse Stump. Wow, 41 years to you too. <laughs> Mary gave a heart-filled speech on my 40-year celebration, and as I reflect on that evening, I would like to say back to you, Mary, congratulations. Mary, on your 41 years of service to Hill Murray, we are a better place because of you. In our time here, we've had various administrators, JR, Susan, and you, like me, had several supervisory evaluations. Those who observed my teaching over the years felt I was positive, professional, enthusiastic, and dedicated. For me, teaching was never about me, as I so often shared with my students when coming into a room. It was not, here I am, but rather, ah, there you are. The craft of teaching is about connection and creating relationships. I have a saying about teaching, if you can't open it up, you can't pour it in. Thus, the art and the science of the profession. Now, everyone here has been a student in a classroom. Had a teacher who made a positive impression or impact on you. So for just a moment, think about a teacher you've had. Father John, you can think about me because you had me. <laughs> Who do you remember? Was it biology or anatomy with Mrs. Grostum? Woodworking with Mr. P? Math with Mrs. Mickner? Abby and Ellie, how about second grade with Mrs. Taplin? Hmm? Why was that teacher special to you? A connection, a relationship, learning something that sparked you? As, as teachers, we never truly know the impact we've made on someone. But it is kind of fun when someone comes up to you, like a few years ago when I was in Dick's Sporting Goods and an employee came up to me and said, you were my high school French teacher. Remember me? I was Pierre. Pierre. <laughs> yeah, I had about 50 Pierres, but yes, I remember you. <laughs> or an even, even bigger surprise, when a lovely card came in the mail about a year ago from a 40-year Hill Murray alum who lives in Austin, Texas, thanking me for the French influence in her life. Now well, that's a legacy. Or as I look at tonight's program and look at the honorees, yes, Jeannie Bush, I hired you. I do recall homecoming masses with Father Greg Tolis and loved hearing about his connection with my long-cherished friend, Honor Hacker. And Father Greg Skrypek, he used to say our opening faculty masses in the Hill Murray Library long before we had a chapel. And Sister Catherine, yes, she was an administrator here when I started way back in 1976. Hill Murray has changed throughout my lifetime, and that is what this has been for me and my family. A lifetime connection to Hill Murray, now and forever, a legacy. Well, let's see, I thank you for this amazing award. I told you a little bit about my Hillary life, gave a bit of insight of what teaching is to me, and now I'd like to close with a brief reflection on the first recipient of this Legacy Teaching Award. I smile as I think of Brother Arnold. When he received this award, he brought in all these artifacts of students' work from who knows how long ago. And Brother Francis, when you told me last spring that Arnie was gonna be 90 years old, I sent a birthday congrats card to him. What does he do? He sends me a handwritten thank you note for a card. <laughs> but this is it. And in his closing thank you, he writes, one of the only lines I know in French is, Femme la bouche. Close, <laughs> close your mouth, and so I will. <laughs>
My son Oliver joined Hill Murray this year. He's a sixth grader, and and it's awesome. Um, he's an incredible kid, and, and people ask me, as a Stillwater grad, and we have a long history in Stillwater, why Hill Murray, right? And what what is it about Hill Murray? Roseville's fine. We go to Roseville, and and the kids he plays hockey with, and Mounds is great. He plays soccer with all those kids. And so when I say why it's different, what I say to Oliver, what he's recognizing now is it's different because of the table in the front. It's different because of the groove in the back who's here to honor everybody. It's different because of the Ryans. Hill Murray is different because of Kay Baker. <laughs> and different because of the teachers who are here to educate the kids. And the honorees from Constance to Tom, Jean, father, Cindy, sister, Biz, um, Mike and Colleen. This is a really special place, and I'm so grateful that you took the time to be here tonight to honor these incredible people. I'm grateful for this community that we have together. I'm grateful that we're back together and, get, and have an opportunity to celebrate, and you should be grateful that I'm done speaking. So, <laughs> thank you.